Today we're having a look at James Flynn and at his contribution to the debate. Are people getting smarter with each passing generation? Or are people getting dumber with each passing generation? Now there's two sides to this story. One set of views is that with each generation, intelligence is declining. And this was shown by looking at reaction times, because reaction times are declining and reaction is closely linked to intelligence. On the other hand though, something even more unusual is happening, and that is that test results for IQ tests are going up. Especially if people sit the same test now that was given 50 or 80 years ago. These days, people do a lot better on those tests. So it seems that the two positions are contradictory. We'll be having a look today at James Flynn and then at his contribution to, his, to this debate. In fact, he coined a term called the Flynn Effect, which explains how and why people are getting smarter with each generation. And then we'll have a look at the appeal of this idea and some of the implications for education. So who is James Flynn? James Flynn is a professor of political science from the University of Otago in New Zealand. And he's famous for his work in intelligence studies. In his early research, he was looking at the gap in IQ test scores between black and white Americans and trying to explain this. Even though this gap is closing, it has been a source of controversy. So in trying to explain this, James Flynn noticed that not only were test scores of black Americans improving, but also the test scores of white Americans were also improving, although not as rapidly. So as I said before, this gap was closing. But in noticing this improvement in test scores across the board, he stumbled upon a new fact, the idea that each generation does better on the same test than its predecessors did. And this uh, effect became known as the Flynn effect, and what, it's what he's most famous for. He made other contributions too, most notably um, refuting some of the ideas in the controversial uh, book called The Bell Curve, um, and also in other areas of politics and intelligence research. So what is the Flynn effect? Let's give some sort of definition. The Flynn effect refers to a substantial and long-term increase in fluid and crystallized intelligence scores in many parts of the world between 1930 and the present day. The evidence for this is the test results. And we'll have a look at the graph now to show you how the change in results on IQ tests between 1932 and 1997. So this graph illustrates the Flynn effect. It illustrates the difference in test scores between 1932 and about 16 years later, in 1997, or 65 years later, and we can see that in 1932, the average was 100, and the small group here were considered intellectually deficient if their scores were between 55 and 70, and the small group here were considered superior if their scores were over 130, and between 130 and 145. When that same intelligence test was administered, in 1997, scores had increased remarkably. The average was about 120, so that's about three points a decade, and a very much larger group were, would have been considered intellectually superior in 1932, and no one in the later test scored between 55 and 70. So there had been an enormous shift in the test results on an IQ score, the same member, it was exactly the same test, administered in 1932 and 1997. But what causes the Flynn effect? This is still unknown, although there are various theories. One of the theories is that it's caused by improvements in nutrition, because we know improvements in nutrition tend to lead to taller people, and it will also have a small effect on the development of their brains. One of the other theories is that improved education is responsible for the Flynn effect. But perhaps the strongest theory of all is that the Flynn effect is down to the extra input that we have in society. There's so many more films now, so many more books, so much more information is available to us that our brains become adept at processing information. 
So what's the appeal of James Finn? Why did I choose to present on him and on the Finn effect? Well, I quite like James Flynn because he seems a man of great academic integrity and honesty. And he's not at all afraid to ask difficult questions that might offend people, but he does it in such a truthful and honest way that you can see that, that he is a servant of the truth like a true academic. The other thing is, I quite like his explanation of the way that test scores have gone up, the way he explains that at three points per decade, and um, by way of doing the same tests. He also doesn't seek to give a definitive answer to why that is so. He leaves that open for us. So what are the implications for learning, including for my learning, of this idea? Well, I think it suggests that our capacity to learn is limitless. Without any changes to the structure of the brain, people were able to improve their scores en masse through modernization. I believe that that's probably through greater input. That seems the most likely explanation. This implies that our learning capacity is almost limitless. With the right techniques and the right input, we can become smarter. And this includes applying ourselves through deliberate practice, because now we have a mechanism to explain how this will make us um, more intellectually competent and more able to handle abstract and complex notions. So, are there any questions about this topic? What was James Flynn's um, interpretation of this effect? Well, James Flynn had a very interesting idea that this, that people improved at answering and dealing with abstract ideas, but they didn't really become smarter. But their intelligence went from their hands and their ability to manipulate things into their brains and their ability to uh, manipulate abstract ideas. Is there any concrete evidence for the causes of the Flynn effect? Well, that's a good question. Um, the only way to get concrete evidence for a theory like this would be to do some very controlled experiments, and that's pretty much impossible without um, subjecting people to very difficult and unnatural conditions. So no, there is no concrete evidence. Um, there are, as I said, the four contenders as to, to what causes it, but uh, and the best one of those seems to be the greater amount of input as leading to greater um, intellectual capacity. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions for you. What does the Flynn effect tell you about learning? Well, it, te it tells us that the brain is plastic and, and, and over generations, even though the brain doesn't change, that we, we're getting smarter over time, which um, because of what the inputs in our environment that are going into our brains. And how about the Flynn's early research? Were you interested in the way that, do you remember how he found out his first, how did, what led him to this study? 